uh, everyone. Uh, we just thought it made sense since we had the pleasure of hosting uh, the new commissioner for his introductions here at ASU this morning uh, to uh, get a chance to address you as well with regard to what our impressions are uh, of the new commissioner, uh, how this came about, uh, and generally just answer any questions uh, that you might have. And uh, Gene uh, obviously is the uh, deputy athletic director and head of our football uh, as general manager, uh, had a great interest in hearing what the new commissioner uh, was going to say in his open remarks, uh, anticipating that football uh, and the growth of football in the conference would be a subject matter, uh, and indeed it was. So I thought uh, it would be helpful to have Gene here to give you some of his perspective uh, from uh, our early meetings with our new commissioner, Clay Ofkoff. So we'll open up for, for questions, uh, unless Gene, you wanna uh, comment prior? No, the only thing I'd say is, as we think about the strategic and operational future of Sun Devil Athletics, uh, and the evolving landscape around us of, of college athletics, uh, very timely and appropriate hire for our conference as we seek to continue to elevate and, and uh, not only keep pace, but surpass some of our, our counterparts in terms of our uh, athletic endeavors in, in that regard. Questions? All right, yeah. first question, we'll go to Hode Rubino. Hi, this is a question for either uh, Ray or Gene. Uh, not to make this uh, too much of a uh, tunnel vision, but I know most fans out there are really wanting to know in terms of the sport of football, what does this hire mean? What are your expectations, impressions, hopes uh, that this new hire uh, will bring uh, in, in the sport of football for the Pac-12? Well, I'll start. I'm, I'm optimistic because you heard him say uh, unequivocally that uh, football was key along with men's basketball as a driver revenue. And uh, while he's gonna pay attention to all the other wonderful things we do, including our women's sports, uh, the bread and butter was that sport. Uh, and so we were able to also uh, talk privately about the importance of very frankly, uh, upgrading, fixing Pac-12 football. And he mentioned some things like uh, recruiting. Uh, I think having a close relationship with the ADs and the coaches uh, to push uh, the football agenda, even mentioning some things like the structure, including scheduling uh, conference, non-conference games. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we're enthusiastic to be sure, uh, because I think the new commissioner understands uh, that football is very critical, uh, but he also understands that uh, he hasn't been around collegiate sports and certainly football. Uh, so I think very clearly he's going to depend on the likes of Merton Hanks and very frankly, myself and Gene and other ADs and coaches uh, who know a little something about football uh, to help advance it forward overall. So we're really excited that we have a commissioner who understands how important football is and I think is very committed to drawing upon all the expertise and resources to help figure out how we advance it. Uh, as quickly and as appropriately as we as we can uh, going forward, bro. So I'm excited personally. I think Gene has some thoughts. He's certainly done his homework. Uh, he certainly is prepared to step into this leadership role uh, in a way that has meaning. Uh, but he also said straight out that he doesn't have all the answers, and that you know he's going to become even more versed. Uh, and very quickly will be not only engaged with the athletic directors of the conference, uh, but obviously his background uh, as, as it relates to his connection to media, both dig digitally and more traditionally, um, and as it relates to scheduling and things like that, I think bodes well for the future as well in terms of the kind of matchups that you can see the conference having moving forward, which helps with the brand, of course. Next question, Doug Holler. Hi, Ray. Uh could you just maybe give us a, a little bit of background on when George came uh, to visit you guys and how long he was here and, and you know, what that visit was like? Uh, he arrived, uh, I think, yesterday evening, uh, and we first met him this morning about 8.45. Uh, and we found out, or at least I found out uh, yesterday, uh, early evening, uh, that the new commissioner uh, name still unknown, was coming to Phoenix 
uh, and they wanted to uh, uh, ask ASU uh, to host uh, for his introductions. And so uh, Dr. Crow and I obviously uh, very enthusiastic to do that. Uh, and so once we determined and found out that he was coming in from uh, Las Vegas, still not knowing who it was, uh, I think that was very convenient, uh, but also very frankly, Doug, I think uh, the conference and the folks handling the search and the announcement uh, were very comfortable that they could do it stealthily here uh, in Arizona uh, with the assistance of uh, ASU and our ops people that we could get it out of here and, and maintain confidence and privilege uh, about as long as humanly possible. Uh, and that's why they came here. So uh, I don't know if you were on the Zoom, but you may have recognized it very frankly, they were in uh, the football conference room uh, where we do all of our big meetings outside of Herm's office. That's where all that activity uh, was taking place. Uh, and then of course, uh, able to take appropriate celebratory photos in the, uh, uh, the agility field, as well as out by the Tillman statute, which he wanted very much to do. So that's how it came about. Uh, but it was nice because we very frankly were the first opportunity to meet and really get to know him a little bit. Uh, President Crow certainly uh, uh, has been on some interviews, but he hadn't met him personally. And uh, as one of the ADs and certainly the deputy AD in charge of football, uh, we were absolutely the first in the conference to spend some time uh, with uh, the new commissioner. And that was pretty cool. Zachary Keenan. Hey, Mr. Anderson. Uh I wanted to ask you, give your information about the, the San Francisco headquarters lease. The University of Oregon president, Michael Schill, said this morning that sounds like he's not too committed or the Pac-12 isn't too committed to keeping the headquarters there. Any information on that when the lease expires or if maybe Las Vegas could be a destination now? Well, you know, we've actually, uh, uh, in defense of the office as, as ADs, as uh, conference leaders, we've talked about the viability of moving out of San Francisco for three or four years. Uh, and so as the lease uh, comes to a close in a couple of years, I certainly think the uh, option of moving to a different locale uh, is absolutely on the table. Uh, could it be Las Vegas? Could it be Phoenix, Arizona? Uh, I think you have to put those two on a list of possibilities. Uh, if in fact the chancellors and the presidents and ultimately uh, with the uh, input of the commissioner determined that we need to move out of San Francisco, uh, the Bay Area, you know, you can always move and move to less expensive uh, offices like we had before we moved to downtown. So it doesn't rule out the Bay Area. Uh, but I think the notion of staying where we are uh, in that particular location in San Francisco uh, is, is probably uh, something that's going to change. I, I see us changing very frankly. I just don't know where and when uh, but the lease is coming up, so that gives you some thought as to when the timing might be. Chris Cartman. Hi, Ray. Uh, hey, Chris. You mentioned the need to do better uh, at competing in revenue sports at the highest level. And just curious uh, for your perspective on what individual institutions like Arizona State can do to support that vision. Well, we can support the, uh, the vision of the conference. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, uh, George comes in with uh, great uh, experience in the media, uh, the entertainment industry, but what he really comes in with is a recognition that we got to be creative uh, in pushing football. And you heard him talk about uh, re looking at scheduling, looking at kickoff times, uh, looking at uh, perhaps uh, non-conference scheduling alliances. Uh, and so what we have to do is we have to have institutions uh, and athletic departments and football coaches who buy into uh, maybe changing some of the things we do to be able to provide uh, something that people find more valuable and want to pay us more money for, bottom line. So uh, those are the types of things that uh, I think uh, the new commissioner will help us think through uh, and we'll solicit a lot of input from folks who uh, have some good ideas about how to do that, Chris. Next question, Michael Carroll Tenuto. Yeah, right. I mean, and to piggyback off that, I mean, like, because you did touch on obviously him not having the, the deepest, obviously, experience in sports, but the business side and, and everything like that. What do you, 
how do you how did you feel like his vision with where the conference needs to go how do you guys align with that with his vision we're very much aligned because he did uh, reiterate the importance of the the women's sports the non-revenue sports across the board we happen to believe that that's very important and that's one of the positives about the uh, pac-12 uh, and so i really liked hearing that uh, but I certainly like hearing the fact that he said, look, this is a job driven by relationships. Uh, I've got to have good relationships with the ADs. I've got to have good relations with the coaches, all of the coaches. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm going to deal with the presidents and chancellors because they're my boss. But he made it very clear that uh, he is going to really work on relationships uh, immediately. Mentioned going on the listening tour. Uh, which means he wants to get on campus physically as soon as he can to get to know the campuses and the folks who uh, help run athletics from the athletic directors to the deputy athletics directors to the senior women administrators to the coaches to the faculty athletic reps. Uh, and that's really strategic. Uh, but very frankly, he also reiterated to me uh, privately that, hey, look, I understand that my relationship with the ADs has to be as partners true partners and he's committed to doing that uh, and so we're excited we think there's a a, a, a new spirit a, a new understanding uh, and someone who is very open uh, to building relationships and he comes in knowing that he doesn't know it all and that's pretty positive any further questions Last call. All right, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. We have this recorded and we will share it with you guys momentarily. Thank you guys for joining. Yep, hope to see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you guys.